Beavers will dash hope of this honest politician, says former Vice President Atiku Abubakar. And women groups intensify lobby to visit 36 governors for political appointments. This is Post Politics, and I am Mary Anna The presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in the recently concluded general elections, Atiku Abubakar, has said the introduction of the bimodal voter accreditation system will dash the hopes of dishonest politicians. He also added that it has become, or it has come to stay, as a legal instrument for the accreditation and transmission of election results in Nigeria. Atiku made this known uh, in celebration of the Supreme Court's affirmation of the victory of Governor Adimola Adeleke of Oshun State. Joining us to discuss uh, the role that the Beavers will play in the elections in the future is Kach Onunuju. He's a political analyst and also joining us is Moshud Isa. He's a communication and development expert. Um, Isa, it's so good to have you join us. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you very much for hosting me. Great. Now you have worked as um, You've been in the field, you've, you've seen many elections come and go, but none compared to the 2023 general elections, being that the Beavers seem to have been the shiny new baby, um, you know, on the block. And many expectations, um, you know, were heightened as a result of the promises that were made by INEC. And, and keying into what the, the former vice president has said, have, have these Beavers really lived up to expectations? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, if you recall, the Beavers was first introduced in the 2021 Anambra governorship election. And if you realize, since the Beavers has been introduced, we hardly receive those fictitious figures we usually get during elections. It means only the real voters are allowed to vote. And from the name Beavers by Modal Voter Accreditation System, it does double form of accreditation. It accredits, it first it scan your PVC, to confirm that PVC belongs to INEC. It then authenticates your fingerprint and then authenticates your facials. Mm. It means, and the fact that it has been backed by law only means only the beavers would be used for accreditation. If you cannot go through the beavers, it means either the PVC does not belong to you or you are not registered voters in that, voter in that location. Mm -hmm. So I agree with the fact that the beavers has come to stay. And so far, it has been a game changer. But again, there is still a lot more to be done. In terms of first, citizens have to know how these beavers work so that they must insist that it should work the way it's supposed to work. And of course, knowing that um, technology is not necessarily a silver bullet, it's being, manip it's being used by humans. So of course, the humans that would use that beavers have to be properly trained and citizens that are at the polling unit, for instance, have to ensure that the beavers is used the way it's supposed to be used. But looking at the 2023 elections, if you know previous elections, there are some certain states where huge figures usually come out from. But if you look at the 2023 elections, you notice that the figures are, are actually reduced. It means the beavers is ensuring that only real voters are allowed to pass through the accreditation uh, process on election day. And with the fact that the law also says that it, uh, the law has redefined overvoting. Overvoting, according to the law, now says that um, the total number of vote cards should not be more than the total number of accredited voters. Initially, the total number of vote cards should not be the total number of registered voters. Meaning, if you finish counting the total number of vote cards, you have to go back to the beavers and look at the no total number of accredited voters, and it has to tally. Mm. And this is where citizens have to actually touch line or touch light or look at to ensure that the figures actually tally. So I actually think the beavers has come to stay. Mm -hmm. It will reduce overvoting. It will reduce voting by proxy. It will also reduce um, manipulation in the electoral process. But again. There is still a long way to go as regarding optimizing the beavers 
ensuring that uh, officials are managing the beavers actually know what they are doing and actually educate the people to actually know how these beavers work to ensure that these beavers is not being manipulated or misused on election day. So to a large extent, I think I agree with the um, PDP candidate, uh, Alaji Atiku Abubakar, but again, we have to optimize it and ensure that those managing the beavers uh, actually know what they are doing and they actually are not in the hands of politicians to manipulate the process. Let me, let me push you further. You talked about the fact that the beavers would show real voters. Might I take you back to what happened during the general elections, whether it be the governorship or the presidential? We saw children. Might I also remind you, the commissioner of police in your state did say that these children were allowed to vote because they had PVCs. Um, but why, how could the beavers not be able to decipher that these children we're not of voting age. So really, is the beaver as infallible as we think it is? So like I said, the, if the beaver and then the technology generally is not a silver bullet. But remember that the issue of underage voting doesn't happen on election day. It starts from the registration period, continuous voter registration. So if we do not flag underage registration at that point in time. And we allow that to go through. Those people are, those underage voters are automatically certified as authentic voters. And you cannot deny them the right to vote. The time to flag underage registration is doing registration. And most times what happened at that point in time is that um, there is usually what you call community collusion or connivance. When you try to register someone and you notice this person is underage. But probably his father or mother or everyone in that community saying, oh, this person is actually 18 years old. You as an INOC official coming from wherever you're coming from, you might be intimidated or to stop uh, that person from getting registered at that point in time. The best thing to do is actually to request for that person's birth certificate. Unfortunately, in most cases, this is not done. So my point is, underage registration, underage voting should be tracked during the continuous voters' registration. It is not the responsibility of the beavers at that point in time to say if you are an underage, the beavers only confirm that that PVC belongs to you and it scans your fingerprints and it authenticates your facial. If you pass through that process at that point in time, sadly you have to vote because at the point of registration, you were not flagged as an underage voter. All right, let, let's talk about, um, let's go back to the Jonathan administration where uh, the issue of CAD readers were, um, you know, introduced. A lot of people have said that, you know, um, biometric, uh, biometric authentication will heal the country. But then we keep introducing all kinds of technology and we still see that major challenge. Uh, you know, of corruption during the elections where the numbers don't tally. We had that issue also for the governorship elections and the presidential elections where the numbers that you get at the polling units are not the same as the ones that are uploaded to the IREV. Again, this biometrics that we all rest our hopes and, and you know, uh, the future on, can we really say that it, it will work? I mean, because we're looking at the future, 2023 elections have passed. We're, look, we're preparing for other elections that are coming. I mean, we know that um, the Kogi elections is also um, coming. There's the Bayelsa election and several other elections that will come. Um, can we trust that this will see more and more out of the electoral process, the corruption that has bedeviled it over the years? Yeah, importantly, it's important, like I said, that um, technology is not a silver bullet. But we must admit that the device is a massive improvement on the smart card reader because it's being optimized. That's one. But again, the fact, the issue around um, figures not tallying, a lot of issues were raised during, during elections. There were some people that actually confirmed that they were, they were registered voters. But at some point, their name was not on that, um, on that, uh, uh, on the beavers. Mm -hmm. And that was what issues that the civil society organization raised actually during the mock accreditation of the beavers, where we noticed that there are some people that have been registered since 2011. Mm -hmm. 
But mm. for some reason, their name had not been config configured into the beaver. Mm. Again, issues were raised. But like I said, it was, it was improvement on the, on the smart card reader. And, you know, we have to differentiate the, between the beavers and the IRF. That's the IRF resort, okay. uh, resort Dream Portal. Where okay. people confirmed that um, the figures that were counted at the polling unit are different from what was eventually uploaded. In most cases, those results were not even uploaded in the presence of the voters. Mm. So that was what happened, that figures they saw in the polling unit was totally different from what they eventually saw on the IRF. Mm. If you remember, INEC came out to say there were glitches with their technologies. They could not upload results on the IRF. In some cases, it took over two weeks. Results were still being uploaded on the IRF. And ideally, the best thing to do is that as soon as you count election results in the presence of everyone, you fill all the form from EC8A in the presence of everyone, you snap that result and upload to the IRF. Mm -hmm. In most cases, those results were not uploaded. So anything could have happened after the election, after mm. the polling unit process. And that was what people actually flagged. You can see a lot of cancellation in some results. You can see some results were on the IRF. You can see a Sokoto State result in, in Lagos because these things were not properly done. And if you remember when I started, I said the humans, the success of divas is subject to the humans that were managing it. Either they were not well trained or they intentionally sabotaged the process. Okay. So technology itself is not a silver bullet. Okay. The humans managing it to go a long way in determining its success. All right. Um, we're being joined by Catch on the Nuju. Uh, Catch, thank you very much for joining us. Now, let's talk about the metamorphosis, just as I was trying to pick up here with Mashu. The metamorphosis of technology in our Nigerian elections. Now, we know how difficult it's been to push for e, um, for e voting, which is another step you know, or another hurdle for us to cross in terms of pushing uh, for this on the floor of the National Assembly. But let's see how it's grown from a CAD reader to the bimodal uh, registration and what would be the next step right after this. Catch, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Uh, first of all, the introduction of biometric authentication is a great leap. It was started during the good luck era. It started as card reader that was fingerprint biometric authentication. It has now been upgraded into a bimodal. That means it takes your fingerprints. It also takes your facial recognition. I pray in future it will progressively come to include the iris and plus the body mass, which is exactly what we currently have in our digital passport protocols. It is a very good thing. It had no problem at all. It worked very, very well. The lack of its proper use in the final tabulation is as a consequence of fraudulent manipulations. As you have seen, we have been able to get access to the hosts of the servers who are in this case, Amazon Web Services. They do provide the same web servicing uh, services for the U.S. Department of Defense. You will understand, the Pentagon will not buy services from a company that does not have that capability to actually defeat all those things that they were saying. Nobody hacked into the servers. As, I, uh, as uh, Amazon said, before, during, and after the elections. It worked very, very well. So you're, the, you're telling INEC, us that INEC lied about the fact that their system was hacked or that the, yes, the fact yes, that they had yes, issues. Yes, yes, yes. So, so INEC, INEC lied 100%. It was INEC lied, and INEC did that. They were caught unawares. The things were working very well until they were instructed to block the Why would INEC try to disrupt its own duties, knowing that they had, of course, raised the hopes of every Nigerian? They had a job to do. They made promises. INEC, Why, what what INEC did INEC stand to gain if, you know, if you, like you said, they lied to Nigerians? Yes. 
INEC put what they were pressurized by politicians to undermine the process because if you check on the same day the results for the National Assembly election were politely progressively uploaded. No problem. Nothing happened to the INEC server. We have gotten that confirmation from those who hosted the server, Amazon Web Services. Nothing happened before, nothing happened during, nothing happened afterwards. If anything happened with the server, we will have known. It was simply a political decision taken by those who saw that the exit polls did not favor what they wanted to have. That was why they were instructed to block the further functioning of the progressive uploading of the presidential election results. That, for the National Assembly, were properly uploaded. There were no problem, and there is still no problem with all those issues. That's why INEC is having problem. It's not going to be able to get Amazon to admit what Mualai Mohammed said in America. That was a big lie. Nobody hacked into the servers. Nobody was able to hack into anybody's servers. It's very good, and that's why we have today subpoenaed the, the uh, we have subpoenaed the uh, Amazon Web Services, and they are coming to Nigeria to testify that nobody hacked into their server before, during, and after the elections. Whatever happened here, we are human mistake that were done deliberately, simply to undermine the process. And one thing I can tell you, in 1993, the result of a presidential election was annulled. And in each place, we had a batch manufactured. What we had that time was instability because of the annulment of that election. I can assure you that due to the annulment of the election of the original results of a presidential election, the country is going to run into instability. Take that to the bank. You cannot re revisit it. The last time we had this was in 1993. We ran into instability and we knew how a better govern. Anytime you steal a hold car, on. hold on, catch. Just give hold that on. vehicle to people. You will catch, have catch, if catch. You own a we car. cannot, we cannot preempt the election tribunal, which is already, which has already kick-started. We can't preempt what the outcome will be. So you can't say that, you know, there's going to be instability. But before we go into another one, let's go back to what former Vice President Atiku Abubakar said uh, about these beavers. He has said, and I quote, the law governing our elections has truly brought power to the people. And those power-mongering politicians who believe that they have or they can freely subvert inherent power of democracy now have their hopes dashed. Um, does it mean that... Former Vice President Atiku Abubakar and everybody who lost in this election, according to the announcement of INEC, uh, fall in the category of the people who have their hopes dashed uh, because of the beavers. What he means is very simple. That we have now come into the period where votes will become votes. Because this is the first time we are having to vote after being authenticated. The introduction of the biometric authentication is a game changer. That's why you did not see, as it was previously the case, the uploading of phantom numbers previously being the norm. It's no more going to be that way. I believe that the signing into law of the Electoral Act Amendment changed everything. Because why? It forced the authentication of whoever the voter will be before you can allow him to vote. That has become law. Apart from that, you cannot pile up numbers just because you want to have new numbers to know. If those numbers are piled in and they, they do not rhyme with the numbers of authenticated voters who were previously authenticated to vote, it will not work. So. If you have any number that comes in that is more than the accredited number of voters, that's what he's saying. It will not work. Mm. And for you to be accredited, you will have to go through authentication through the Beavers machine. Okay. What the Beavers machine is, is a progression of the original card reader. The card reader was just some print biometric capture. The Beavers means bimodial, some print plus 
facial recognition. Mm -hmm. So it's a progressive way of that original introduction, which we call the card reader, which only captured the thumbprint. Okay. Now, the new biometric system captured the thumbprint and facial recognition. That's why if those things are now implemented, you will not be able to just pile in numbers because those captures go into the accreditations and you're not going to have more numbers suddenly return more than the accredited voters. That's why he's saying that, that the day of simply wishing on numbers will not anymore hold. That's why we're seeing what we're seeing right now. Okay. So let us go to the tribunal. Let everybody prove his case. And as far as I'm concerned, I think Abubakar is very right on that very point, okay. that the days of simply writing numbers are gone. Okay. Nigeria is on to a very brand new pedestal in regards of honest elections. Okay. Kat, I'm going to come back to you to talk about lawmakers and how we can improve the electoral process. But let me come back to you, um, Mashoud. Um, for, for those who have, because I, 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 I'm on the radio and I'm, I'm listening to people and, and, you know, feeling the pulse of the people after the elections. And, and I got to hear something that's very remarkable. Uh, might not be, you know, the best thing, but there's, there's something that's called post-election traumatic syndrome. I don't know how they coined it. And that's because a lot of people feel let down by the election. So I'm going to ask you a direct question. Did technology fail us uh, during this election, or did INEC itself fail technology? I, I don't want to point accusing fingers, but I think um, technology did not fail us. And I think the introduction of technology, if, if implemented properly, it will have achieved optimum optimum results. Okay. Technology did not scale uh, Nigerians. Mm. I think the humans managing technology to a large extent actually failed the technology and to some extent actually uh, actually failed uh, the Nigerians or those that actually feel agreed. But again, the deployment of technology has been an improvement on the previous process. Even the figures that came out from the election, you can see they are substantially real voters as compared to uh, previous uh, numbers that we usually have. So I think our technology did not fail Nigerians. A large extent technology actually exposed uh, the usual malpractice that we usually see before. I think technology to a large extent exposed it. I think the commission actually made a lot of promises especially around the fact that results from the polling unit will be uploaded in real time. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that did not happen. In that case, you will not blame technology. You blame those that refuse to or that could not harness the power of that technology to actually promote uh, transparency. The ideal thing is that you upload results from the polling unit before you get to the world level the World Coalition Officer must have seen the results you uploaded. And if you announce anything contrary to that, you're going back. Hmm. Unfortunately, that due diligence did not happen. But technology was there to be harnessed. So it did not fail us. Those that should make use of that technology to promote electoral transparency probably did not do enough. Hmm. Okay. How do, we, how do we appeal to the senses of those who feel like um, their time, their energy, the hyped-up mentality that they had before and during that election seem to be dashed? Um, what do we tell those people? How do we um, somewhat galvanize them again for another election cycle? Because for most people, I mean, unlike... I mean, more like every other election cycle, it's always the watershed moment. Everybody says, well, this is the one that's supposed to make or break us. Um, but it, it, seemed that there was, it seemed like there was more attention, more energy. Um, people were more interested in this election as opposed to any other election that we've had. Um, what do we tell those people who have said, look, I'm not touching that PVC anymore. I'm not going to the polls. It's not worth it. Well, how do you appeal to their sensibilities? No, you tell them that the fact that they could even point out that something was, went wrong is a progress from what happened in previous times where you just see figures and you cannot perform. Mm. But now you can actually point out it's transparent for you enough for you to point out where the gap is. 
So it's an improvement in your knowledge from previous elections. And it means if you want to raise any case or any issue, you know where to point out to. Mm. So that enough is, um, is, a, is some kind of solace for those that their hope were that. I totally understand the fact that there were a lot of expectations, a lot of promises on this election. And to some extent, some people, some set of people feel that promises were not fulfilled. But the fact that we now know the responsibility of Diva, and we know the responsibility of IREF, and we can go on IREF and compare results, I think, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge step mm. as compared to previous elections. Okay. And subsequently, we can know where to bridge the gap. If an electoral officer refused to upload results right from polling units, maybe you as a voter, you can put your hands together and refuse to allow him to go until he does the right, does the right thing. Hmm. So the fact that you know the right place to bridge the gap as a citizen, meaning if you're going into another election, you know where to bridge the gap. Okay. You know what to ensure that electoral officials do. So I think that alone should give us hope okay. going into subsequent elections. All right. Back to you, Kat. Um, let's talk about the legislation um, behind, you know, pushing our electoral processes further, uh, not higher, if, if I might say, um, especially when we have been pushing the idea of e-voting and diaspora voting, which might be the next step. And, and I'm not just talking about the accreditation and the, and the scans and all of that. Of course, there will be um, an inch better or higher when it comes to you know, um, accreditation and voting. But the voting process in itself is where the attention is being moved now. Looking at the members who are going to be constituting the new um, um, National Assembly, both the upper chamber and the lower chamber, and the guys who are going to be sitting at the helm of affairs, um, if what the former vice president has said is anything to go by, will these same people be willing to push the electoral process further, knowing that this might, one way or the other, um, cut off the wings of the so-called corrupt politicians and the, you know, um, shortcuts that they take to winning? One thing I can tell you is looking at a holistic picture, you need to understand that our country is changing. Nigeria is changing. We now have suddenly available on the scene the best educated generation of Nigerian youth. They want to get involved, and you can see what they have done. They are members of the new youth-driven movement, and I believe they're not going to give away. It's a very young country, and they are up to 75%, if not up to 80 of our country's population. They want a Nigeria that works for them. Now, you've seen them do this, and you've seen the old brigade try to acknowledge and write other things and tell them, go to court. It's just like trying to kill a python. You don't kill a python with a single strike. You have to hit and hit and hit and hit again before the python goes down. So we are, as I can tell you, in addition to what the former vice president said, we are on to a totally brand new era. Nigeria must now confront its own old demons, defeat those demons for Nigeria to be to, to move forward. I believe that the new generation that are now pushing on all fronts are going to be able to exert the maximum pressure to force changes in our country. I have no doubt Nigeria is changing. I am very, very encouraged with the things that I've seen, with the way young people have come out and suddenly are now interested. Okay. Me and you know this started about two years ago. They were Catch, we the have street, to go. We have they were to go. violently suppressed, and then they are still here, engaged with all of us politically. Mm. I don't see the youth in any way slowing down. All I right. see the youth scale, sc uh, scaling up what they are doing, mm. and I believe with such pushes, Nigeria is heading for change. All right, thank you so much, Catch. Catch on the Nuju is... Uh a political analyst, and we also want to say thank you to Moshudi Sa, who is a communications and development expert. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for speaking with us. That's our time. Thank, thank you for having me. Thank you. Well, we'll take a break. Coming up next, women are canvassing across 36 uh, states of the Federation, and they're asking for appointments. What does the Tinubu administration have in store for women? Stay with us.